It's October 20, 2023, and I am looking forward to talking to you about best uh, lawn care practices right now for this time of year for mowing and for watering. And since I've been talking about watering so much, I'm gonna to talk to you about mowing first, and plus that's the one I'm most excited to talk to you about today. And I'm excited because I've learned something new that I used to uh, not be aware of, and so I'm sure it will be new to most of you. Um, we went to the Deep South Turf Expo in Biloxi, Mississippi this week, and we uh, I go to that every year. Uh, Weed Warriors typically bring several employees down there because we, we like to learn about the new research that's going on, and uh, so we get to, to listen to researchers, not just from the Southeast, but they usually bring in somebody from the mid-atlantic uh, northeast as well and so um the big thing i one of the biggest things i learned was about uh research that's been done on mowing height and how it affects winter survival or, or survival of winter damage to warm season grasses specifically centipede and centipede is the one that you heard me talk a lot about recently because it's the one that got damaged the worst from our last winter uh the arctic blast of december and then in march we had uh well february and early march we had some warmer temperatures and then it got really cold uh really cold that hurt that new tissue uh leaf tissue that came out and so centipede was just bad and then we had the drought this year and the centipede really was uh was damaged worse than any other grass and so it was really cool that the research has come out is on centipede because centipede needs every little bit it can be helped with this does apply also to other turf grasses. Uh, I, I don't, I can't say that I've seen research or heard of research done on them, but when you hear the reasoning behind it, I think you'll see that this can be applied to the other turf grass types as well. And, and the point I'm trying to get to is that centipede that was mowed low, and hear me to the end because I don't want you to take away any false conclusions, but centipede that was mowed low survived winter damage better than centipede that was mowed high and by the way uh, they also threw in another uh, growth factor of fertilization uh, centipede that was and I'm, I'm coming over here to the sand if you wonder why I'm walking backwards because I want to show you something cool about the stolens the, the stems um, but centipede that was mowed low did a lot better than the centipede that was mowed up high above the ground Centipede that was mowed low and did not get over fertilized, which at Weed Warriors, I like to make a point that that's, that's what we do. We don't fertilize centipede like we do Bermuda and Zoysia. Um, and that's on purpose. That's because research has shown you can over fertilize centipede and it actually causes more damage. Nevertheless, I'm not gonna say anything more about the fertilizer part. The centipede that was fertilized the least, the minimum amount like we do, and mowed low was the best combination of all the factors of surviving the winter. And let me explain to you why that is. So centipede, as you know, if you've uh, ever gotten down on the, close to the ground and pulled up some of these runners, you know, Bermuda, this is our sand pile. Bermuda has these runners that, let me find a good one. You know, they run across the ground. This is a sand pile that's running into the sand pile. But this will go across the ground and it'll root down. That's Bermuda. Centipede will do it. St. Augustine will do it. Zoysia will do it. So what's the difference? Centipede only runs above the ground. It only has stolons. Bermuda and Zoysia can also have rhizomes, which are stems that run under the ground also. So Bermuda and Zoysia run under the ground and above the ground, runners in both scenarios. Whereas centipede and St. Augustine, they only grow above the ground. And so guess what happens with really cold temperatures? There's nothing below ground that can protect uh, the plant as a whole. Yes, they have roots, but if the stems get really, really cold weather, um, it will affect the plant as a whole and the, um, the stems down low. Well, there are no stems down low. Sorry, I keep repeating myself. But that's why, so, you know, when you mow your centipede really high or right now what a lot of people are doing, they're not mowing it because we're in a drought. It doesn't need to be mowed as much, and so people aren't mowing. Uh, it's one thing that you can kind of skimp on a little bit, perhaps. But this is my video to help you to realize why you shouldn't do that, uh, or at least how it's not too late to turn the ship around. But I, what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to scalp it. Um, if you have really waited a long time, 
you might want to you know compared to the height you've been mowing it off summer you might want to raise it a little bit mow it wait another week or two and then mow it back to the height that you've been doing all summer i think it's a little it's, it's too late to be lowering uh, like scalp it, it's definitely too late to scalp it so don't do that don't low it don't mow it lower than what you had been doing all summer next year go ahead and if you have if you keep a calendar of these things or if you just have a good memory just know and remember that as you work your way down towards october to gradually lower it you never want to uh unless it's at the very beginning of spring and you know the good temperatures are coming and you know it's just about to really enjoy uh, living life outside the grass is then you can scalp it because it's not going to be under stress because the temperatures are good you know you do it when you know the temperatures are, are forecasted to be really good um, but you don't want to scalp it in the summer because it's already under stress on the heat you don't want to scalp it right now in the winter time when it's not going to have a chance to put up a whole uh, a, a lot more leaves to help recover um, but again I just want to say but if you just but mow it you know if you haven't mowed mow it because lower mode centipede and I would go ahead and say St. Augustine, Georgia and Bermuda as well survive winter damage a lot more and centipede in particular is the most sensitive to winter damage. St. Augustine is also sensitive. Bermuda, Georgia, not as much as the others. Um, okay, water. Let me say real quick. Um, in a typical October, you don't have to water because we've already gotten enough water. There's enough water in the soil profile. This October, much like our August and September, well, similar to our, our August and September, uh, the ground I'm standing on right now, it's, it's in a, a really bad drought. Uh, the ground is cracked really bad underneath my feet right here. Um, and so the soil, the grass, would benefit from water. Water is, by the way, one of the top three uh, growing factors, uh, plant growth factors. You have water, sunlight, temperature. We can't control the sunlight and temperature. I mean, if you want to make a bigger argument, we can't control water either. No rain, we all suffer. Um, but thankfully, we do have uh, uh, water associations that provide us with water to that point know that you know there are some places i've in particular heard of one uh in the jackson metro area that has restricted uh, the way that you need to use your water so do be aware of that and honor what they're saying because they know better than any uh normal citizen could know what you know how far we do or don't need to push the different um water tables that are out there those the water tables they can recharge refill and be back to square one rather easily but the, the water people are the professionals. Trust them with what they say. I, I by no means want to buck against what they're saying. But I also don't want people to live in fear when they don't need to because there's some places that that's just not a concern. There's enough water in the ground because the good Lord has blessed us before July 15th with plenty of rain. Sorry. The point I want to say is it does still need water. This week we're all in the 80s. Uh, sorry, next week we're going to be, well, this weekend and this coming week, we're gonna still be in the uh, lower to mid 80s, and that means drier conditions, which means the grass is still under stress. I don't know if I finished my thought earlier. Three growing conditions. Water, yeah, I did say it. Water, light, temperature. Temperature, it is what it is. It's about to get colder. It's not gonna need as much, or it's not gonna allow the plants to grow as much. The sun is what it is, but I just want to go ahead and say that so that you can be aware, because if you're watching this video, you care about how to help grass and plants grow. Um, so anytime that you have limbs blocking, just know that that is a factor that affects how the grass grows. Grass prefers all the sun it can get, and then water. Those are the big three. Nutrients, fertilizer, that's a distant fourth. It does help, it can be, uh, something that we can talk about another time i'm going to end there let me know if you have any questions i really appreciate y'all that like these videos i appreciate it when y'all let me or my employees know that you're watching these videos it helps me to know that you really are watching so if you don't mind like that video leave me a comment if you have any questions and uh, if you haven't done this yet subscribe to the channel thank you for watching